Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Simply Heal. And today with me again is Dr. Jansen Kalala. Hello Shan, hello everyone. Happy to be here. Again, today we're going to talk about a very important topic. Is basically, should cancer patients exercise? Dr. Jansen, is this a controversial topic? Uh, yes, it is. Actually, <laughs> there is a big misconception about exercise no? uh, when you have cancer. Actually, uh, even just, when you're sick. Yeah, even with, when you're sick, no. Um, usually, we tell our loved ones, no, our friends, family members, no, uh, relatives that when you're sick, just rest. Don't exert too much effort. But uh, that's actually absolutely wrong, right? Uh, so actually, it is important uh, for cancer patients to do get moving and to exercise. And for for any case, if you are ill, uh, there are certain movements that are critical to your body's function. You know, just doing like a squatting kind of motion is important for blood to circulate back to your heart. Yes, as simple as walking. No? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that would promote circulation. Uh, and circulation is so important to health, right? So if, if your blood is not circulating in your body, then everything goes wrong. Uh, things collect, uh, toxins collect, oxygen is not going to be brought to your uh, extremities and your organs, even nutrients. So you really got to get your blood moving. And very much like the Dune, uh, those of you who watch Dune the movie, the steel suits uh, are pumped by movement. <laughs> okay, I think I lost some people there. But basically, uh, movement pumps your blood around your body and so that's very important uh, imagine if your blood just stays stagnant and you are sick that's obviously not good so doc maybe some hard facts about what about cancer patients and exercise yep so um, first let's talk, take a look at the quality of life why are we even um, promoting exercise in cancer patients it's because uh, cancer patients tend to have poor quality of life all of us know, no, when you have cancer, when you undergo treatment for cancer, definitely you will have poor quality of life. However, um, what does poor quality of life mean? I mean yeah, what, what does that mean? What is life? quality of life? So this is what quality of life means. Um, it's a very, it's a very worthy definition. Okay, but uh, please focus on the general well-being, physical well-being. Um, psychological psychological well-being. Uh, well mm. Okay, so here in this study, they investigated 760 patients. Wow, that's quite okay. a lot of patients. Yeah, so um, what the researchers did was to investigate what are the determinants of quality of life. Okay, and they use this definition. Right now, um, upon investigating, you know, they found out that around 82.3% of patients, of cancer patients, actually have low quality of life. Which wow, is a, which is a very... which means a general not well being physically, no no well being psychologically, not being well. I mean, it's the direct opposite True. of what quality of life means. Yeah, yeah. So it's a very significant number. So out of seven hundred sixty patients, eighty two percent of them have poor or very low quality of life. Okay, and among those who have uh, who've reported such a uh, low quality of life, though, ninety six percent of cancer patients reported low, uh, very low general well-being. 72 of them uh, reported very low physical well-being. Okay. So looking at the statistics, Doc, um, it's quite, these are very common complaints or feedback from cancer patients. And if you are a cancer patient, you probably be feeling this as well. Number one on the list is 91%, basically nine out of 10 cancer patients complain of fatigue. They're just too tired to yes. do anything. Now, is that, how is that important? That's very important for your treatment too. Imagine if you're feeling tired and you're going for chemotherapy. Or even worse, you're getting, you feel fatigued and you know you're preparing to go for surgery. Uh, that's just a terrible combination. Yes. Uh, the second one is not being able to sleep. 7 out of 10 cancer patients uh, find it difficult to fall asleep. And doc, not being able to fall asleep, uh, that will result in hypertension, all yes. sorts of problems. All sorts of problems. That would and contributes again. to fatigue. <laughs> yes, it also contributes to fatigue. So yeah. it's a vicious cycle here. No? So you as a cancer patient, you already uh, suffer physical, you're physically stressed, you're emotionally stressed, you're mentally stressed. No? And then you're now you're going to undergo um, cancer treatment, which will bring in more fatigue um, and stress. Now, you are already very tired. However, 
the reason why you're tired is because you're also sedentary, because you're not exercising. So where do you begin? How do you address this? No? So of course, um, supplementation is one. No? But uh, our topic today is exercise. exercise. So it has to begin somewhere. So now, for those of you no, who are not, uh, who haven't uh, underwent any cancer treatment yet or about to undergo cancer treatment, it's very important that you exercise now while you are still um, able to. Able to. Because you're still, uh, energy-wise, you still can. Because once you're in there, once you're already uh, undergoing cancer treatment, the fatigue will just um, um, accumulate one on top of the other. You'll have difficulty sleeping, which will now even more um, uh, promote uh, more fatigue. Okay? You know, this... And we're going to just show a, a clip here. This is what a healthy cancer patient should look like, right? Just look at this person uh, jogging and uh, running. This is a cancer patient. So look at the video. That's how a cancer patient should look and feel. Um, if you take care of yourself, this is what it should be like when you go undergoing cancer treatment. But most people look like this when they're undergoing cancer treatment. So you can see how important it is to aim to be able to get well and start moving your body and actually get healthy, uh, even though you are a cancer patient and undergoing chemotherapy. So that's why the protocols that we share over the last two years, the aim is not just to treat yourself in cancer. The first step is if you're very fatigued, if you are bedridden, first step is to have protocols introduced by Dr. Johnson to get you out of bed, to get you moving like this. Uh, you'll be feeling better and you'll be in a better mental uh, mental and emotional condition to go forward with your cancer treatment. Right, Doc? Yes. Okay. So, here it is. So, the answer to poor quality of life among cancer patients is actually exercise. Okay, so here are the benefits. So, you not only get better general well-being, you can become more, uh, in terms of your physical well-being, it would, it would be better. In terms of your uh, psychological well-being, uh, mental and emotional, it would also be better because exercise, as you all know, no, it not it does not only uh, make your body stronger physically. I mean, I mean, you can you, you would be able to still lift the heavy objects, reach out for those household mm. items that you you need feel to. more capable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You 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 feel more capable. You maintain the capableness of your body. <laughs> Okay, so not only that, because exercise also makes you feel good. Yes, it does. Okay? So it brings you a better mood, brings you more energy. It even helps you sleep better at night. Yeah, but statistically speaking, uh, I'm looking at the data that's in front of me. Uh, yeah, Doc, maybe you elaborate yeah. on some of these um, data. Women no, uh, who have breast cancer, actually, if the more you do physical activity, the least fatigue, uh, the less fatigue symptoms that you will feel. Okay, and uh, in terms of overall quality of life, it would just be better. Okay, so not only um, women who have diagnosed with breast cancer, no? this is especially true for uh, breast cancer patients who are undergoing treatment. Okay, so just imagine. Okay, so even so, uh, when you're undergoing bre uh, breast cancer treatment, like chemotherapy, uh, immunotherapy, or whatever treatment that you're undergoing, it's not an excuse for you not to exercise all the more reason for you to go for exercise okay now of course if you are fatigued it's a valid reason not uh it's a valid uh resistance or valid uh reason for for you not to go for exercise but of course the question is the intensity of course if you would not be doing uh, any vigorous or any very uh, any intense physical activity right you can just go for, you know, your light walks as long as there's some degree of exercise. Then start. You have to start somewhere. You, have, you just have to get moving. Then later on, once you are once you're already uh, used to the exercise that you're doing, that's the time that you that we scale up. Okay? Yeah. Doc, we know the benefits of exercising, but actually what happens when you don't exercise? Yeah, so this is what we typically see because uh, majority of cancer patients are sedentary. No? Like, 66% of them, in fact, yeah, actually, according to the data. Yes, according to the data, no, 66% of uh, cancer patients are sedentary. Okay, And if you compare no, um, to you being sedentary, if you're sedentary the whole day, if you're sedentary for more than 8 hours versus... Four hours. Four hours, no. Um, for cancer patients who are physically active, 
so this is the this is the dis, uh, this it, is the disparity in terms of uh, all cause mortality and dying from cancer. So 81% increased risk for dying from any other causes and 120% increased risk in dying from cancer. Wow. And if you are both, that means physically inactive and very sedentary at the same time, there's a 438% increased risk of all-cause mortality and dying from cancer. So you're almost like four and a half times more likely to die from cancer if you are sedentary and physically inactive. Now that, but, and, but yet the case is 66% of cancer patients are like that. Yes. So uh, there's almost like a direct match between the mortality rate of cancer. People who die from cancer are sedentary. Right. So visualize in your mind how it would feel. You now, if you have been, if you are a cancer patient, I think it must have been some time since you really felt the breeze in your face, mm -hmm. the sunshine in your face, and being able to walk, uh, walk briskly, even maybe sweat a little. Uh, imagine how good that would feel, and I think uh, that should encourage us uh, to exercise even though you have cancer. In fact, it's imperative, it's a must. It should be your goal to be able to do some light exercises while you are a cancer patient. You're right, Shan. Actually, it's a very good image no, that, you can, that you can visualize. No? Uh, you having a good quality of life, you know. Uh, walking. You know, walking, doing the things. Sweating a little. Yes. Uh, especially um, the, the, the daily activities that you need to do. I mean, if, yeah. you are, if you can visualize yourself being able to do them, just when you were young, right? Yeah. It would be a really uh, very ins uh, inspirational, inspirational yes. encouraging. encouraging. So how much exercise should you be doing? It's 150 minutes per week of moderate intensity physical activity or 75 minutes per week of vigorous intensity physical activity. Oh, that's it. That's pretty reasonable. If you divide 150 over 7 days, that's almost like just 20 minutes. 20 minutes more than a little bit of 20 minutes. Yeah, that's a everything. really nice brisk walk. Uh, I expect that a moderate intensity means that you will have a very light, light, light sheen of sweat yeah. after you're done. You know, like yes. perspiring like crazy. Just yes. a light sweat. Oh, that will feel good. Can, yeah. can you imagine how that will feel? It's been a, some time, right, for many of us. Yeah. Actually, there's a way to calculate this you know, based on your heart rate. But oh. uh, we won't discuss that. I won't be discussing this over here because of uh, time constraints. So, but I, if you want to know, ask in, ask in the Ask Me Anything segment of today's program. If you really want to know what your should your heart rate be? But I think, Doc, a simple, a simple uh, guideline you always share with us is that you should be able you walk. Yeah, while doing the physical activity, you can still you sing. Can, uh, uh, if you can still talk, but yeah. not sing, that's moderate intensity. Correct. If you can still talk but not sing, and I think that feels very comfortable. You feel yourself working out a little bit, and I, I like I said, it's good to sweat just a little, right? Uh, yes, but Doc. Can cancer patients actually do vigorous exercise? Of course. Oh, really? That's yeah. that's so uh, good to know. Yeah, I, I mean, if you if you can walk, if you can still jump, I mean, of course you can do vigorous intensity physical activity, especially for those uh, cancer patients who are who were diagnosed very early on, early stage uh, cancers. Mm. Definitely, you can do this. I mean, uh, you can run, right? You no, no, run. I'm gonna ask the like obvious questions that some cancer patients might think, right? Oh. If I move around a lot, my blood moves around a lot, wouldn't that cause the cancer in my body to spread faster? Uh, oh, <laughs> yeah, it's a very good question. Actually, no. Because exercise activates pathways which are anti-cancer. Yes. You know, uh, sorry to interject over here, but you know, PPARS is uh, my area of uh, interest and research. So PPAR receptors are actually activated when you move your muscles because they are mainly found in your muscle tissue. So that means the reason why exercise makes you healthy is because they activate your PPAR receptors. Uh, and, and that in, in turn activates your immune system. So not only so when you move, you're not only moving your blood around your body, you're actually activating your own immune system. So that's why Doc says that when you exercise, uh, it's not going to spread your cancer. Instead, it's going to activate all the anti-cancer mechanisms in your body. So, uh, cancer patients can do vigorous exercise. Of course. So they can play badminton if they're stamina. Of course. Oh, yeah. As long as you're able to, you can do it. Go ahead. 
enjoy yourself, put a smile on your face, and that will do wonders for your fight against cancer. So, in summary, for today's program, should cancer patients exercise? The answer is a resounding yes. In fact, all data points out to the fact that if you are sedentary, that means you don't move a lot, a lot move around a lot, and you actually have no specific exercise regime, your chances of death from cancer is actually four and a half times higher than some than a cancer patient who exercises. So again, remember all those inspiring movies uh, or TV shows that you see where a person beats cancer? In every one of those programs, more likely than not, you will see that the hero, uh, the cancer patient, is jogging, is, is moving, is uh, doing routine stuff. So we want to encourage everyone to sweat a little, get moving. If right now you're a cancer patient who's bedridden, uh, one of your first goals that you should set is to get strong enough to be able to go walk in your garden, breathe in some fresh air, and take it step by step from there. I can see there are lots of questions coming in. Doc, I think some people might want you to demonstrate what kind of exercises you can do. So uh, without further ado, let's move to the Ask Me Anything segment.